Hello and welcome to Mile High Reefers. I'm Scott Anderson. And today's video is how to tune an Aqua Sea EV protein skimmer. And I really love Aqua Sea's protein skimmers. Now let me disclose right off the bat that the only protein skimmer I've ever used is an Aqua Sea. I've had great luck with them. It's all I use and I will fully admit that they are not the most efficient skimmer on the market from a power consistency standpoint. And you can definitely make the argument that the foam fractionation is not as efficient in a Aqua C style protein skimmer as in a pinwheel style. But all that stuff put aside, I find them to be incredibly reliable and do a great job skimming. I've owned three Aqua C EV protein skimmer, because I've ran all three on my system. I have an Aqua C EV120, an Aqua C EV180, and the one you're looking at is an Aqua C EV1000. I have ran them in the sump, I've ran them externally, and I've ran two small Aqua C EVs at once. So I feel like I'm fairly adept at using these skimmers and have kind of tried most of the combinations that there are to try with them. So the very first thing is, if you're buying one of these, you kind of need to figure out how you're going to run it, your pump setup, all of that kind of stuff. Now you'll see, I run mine externally. I really like externally because it doesn't require me to take up space in my sump. And as you can see, this monster Aqua C EV1000 would never sit in my sump. So that's one of the great things about an Aqua C protein skimmer is I don't actually have to worry about the water in the tank. The <clears throat> water volume is actually adjusted inside the skimmer itself. So as long as you're able to get a good drain into your sump, it can be ran externally, which is the way I like my skimmer. Now I realize that's not practical for a lot of people, but for me it works great. So the first thing you have to decide when you're buying an Aqua C protein skimmer is what size pump to run. So do a little research. Aqua C is going to recommend different pumps for different systems. So for my Aqua C EV1000, it recommends a MagDrive 18 or the Panworld 200 PS that you see and several others. Now, for my Aqua C EV1000, I'm actually not running enough water flow through it. I have the Panworld 200 PS, but I'm using the Panworld 200 PS to run my entire system. So that's running the bio pellet reactor, that's running the tank upstairs, that's running frag tanks, that's running everything, including the protein skin. So I have to be a little better with my tune to get by with the lower flows that I'm getting out of it. Now most of you guys buying smaller Aqua Seas, like an EV 120 or 180 or 250, you're probably gonna wanna go with something like one of these mag drive pumps. You can see that one's dirty, it's been used many times, and they're pretty reliable. The one thing you do have to worry about with the mag drive pumps, and to a lesser extent, it could affect my 200 PS, is that a lot of times you get debris inside your pump, reducing your efficiency of your pump, and that makes it really hard to tune. If you're not running enough water through it, your skimmer will never run right. The other thing is, is don't be afraid to go a little big on your pump when you're buying it. If you see it's recommended in a Mag 5, don't be afraid to buy a Mag 7 for it. Worst case scenario, you can run a valve on your inlet line and throttle that back. I really like running a bigger pump than is required for my skimmers. When I ran a dual skimmer setup, I had my 200 PS setup, and then I had my Aqua C EV 180 and 120 ran to it, and I would basically tune the system by turning the valves with the water in. That way I was able to run the absolute max water in. Now if you read the manual for Aqua C, it claims that this is not the most effective way to do it. I'm not sure what they're thinking there. I had a lot of success with that. So I highly recommend that. But, you know, 
little trial and error, but definitely don't be afraid to run a big pump on your Aqua C EV system. So from the pump, your water needs to feed into your protein skimmer. And this is exactly what I was talking about. I valve my water coming in. Now, since I'm not running enough total water volume to run this skimmer at its max, I have this fully open. And remember, this valve is not required by Aqua, by Aqua C, but I highly recommend it. Like I said, if you have the option of running a bigger pump, run a bigger pump, and then you can put a valve on here, and you can tune how much water is flowing into your system. Just make sure whatever pump you buy can handle the head pressure. But by running the max water flow through, you're going to get the most efficiency. So what's happening is the water is going through this pipe, and then this is what's called the water injector. And it looks just like that guy. So the water goes in here and it's squirting straight down here. And if you look at this thing, you've got three little things. And that is shooting water through a little air column in here. And that's creating your bubble. So by having this, it's increasing the pressure. And that's what's creating the air. So it's like a, holding your thumb over a hose and squirting it into the bucket, right? You see all that foam coming up. That's exactly how this skimmer works. And that's why these are really reliable. It's a plastic case and a pump and nothing to go wrong. And when a pump fails, you can use any pump with reasonable specs to make these skimmers work effectively. I can use a real pump, a quiet one pump, whatever works as long as it meets the head pressures and flows that are needed to run an aqua seat. So this is it. No pinwheel, no venturi, none of that stuff to go wrong. It's just an injector. One thing to keep in mind, if you're struggling with your tune, pull your injector out and make sure that it's not clogged. You can see it's kind of, for a one inch piece of pipe, it really does come down small. That's what gives you your pressure, but it also gives you the possibility for clog. I've seen calcium build up in here, I've caught bio pellets in here, I've caught all kinds of debris in here. So just be cognizant that that is going to be an issue for you. So if you're struggling with your tune, just pull that out, it unscrews really easy, and just clean it. If you have to, soak it in a bit of vinegar overnight, and then wash it out with some water, they clean up pretty easy. So your next adjustment is going to be your air inlet. And you'll see it's valved. So you can actually adjust how much air runs into your skimmer. I always run full air. I'd rather adjust how much water is going in and my water height. I never mess with it. Especially since if you, you can probably hear a, a slight little sucking sound. I've got holes drilled in my protein skimmer from the factory. And the seals that I have in here to block them aren't the best. These are just some caps I bought at Lowe's. Because um, I bought this unit used. It didn't have the plugs that came from the factory. But it's drilled so that you can run your calcium reactor to it. And this is something I should probably be doing. By running your calcium reactor to it, you can use the high oxygen levels to help drive up the pH. So you don't get the low pH going directly into your sump. And that's something I really ought to be thinking about doing. It's also drilled so that I can run ozone to it. But for me, the most effective way to run this thing is fully open, getting as much air as possible. One thing to be careful of though, these clog relatively easy. Basically, salt creep gets in here. So clean this thing fairly regular. If you're having problems with your tune, take it out, clean it. This is one thing that'll bite you. If you're not getting air in, you'll never get good foam fractionation. So then the water exit the skimmer through this gate valve. And this gate valve is how you tune the water level inside the skimmer. By closing it off, you raise the water level in the skimmer. By opening it up, you lower the water level in the skimmer. Now, if you've got a big enough pump, like I was saying before, you can also raise the level in the skimmer by turning the volume on your pump up. So that's another thing to think about, and that's how I really prefer to do it. 
but as you can see, I don't have that ability. I'm maxed out on pump speed. So I use my gate valve and it works really well. One thing to think about is you've got to have a T so your water goes down into your sump. Now I say T, don't use an elbow, have a T because you want to vent your system, right? If you don't have that air to vent in, you will not be able to get the best flow possible. So you really want that vented so that you can get good water flow exiting your system so you're not getting any restrictions. So this runs as well as possible. So now you need to kind of figure out where you actually want your water level at. So to show you, I'm actually gonna clean my skimmer out so that we can get a good look at where the water's set in there. The other important thing to think about is cleaning your skimmer. If your skimmer is dirty, it's not gonna run at its full effectiveness. I clean mine once every week or two. You know, it's kind of when I get around to it. I cleaned this thing out two days ago. You can see it's fairly dirty again. And I'm gonna clean it again today, not so much because it absolutely needs it, but so you can see where we're at. So you might think that having a big skimmer would make it hard to clean. And actually, that's the opposite of the truth, right? In fact, it's easier to clean, because look how big this thing is. I've got loads of room to work. I can just clean it in place, stick my hand in there, get rid of the goo, and it's just not an issue. So when I adjust the water level in my skimmer, I like to adjust it so that the water level is just right below the edge of the neck of this skimmer. The idea is to drive as many bubbles as possible into the neck. What happens is if it's too, if the water level is too low, it, the bubbles build up inside the body of the skimmer and you'll end up with lots and lots of protein deposits on the top of the body of the skimmer, which isn't where you want it. You want your protein deposits to come up the neck, right? You're trying to get them in that cup you're trying to get them on the sides where you can clean them out. You don't want them on the bottom of the body where it's really hard to clean. It's also not very efficient. So by adjusting it so your water level is just right below the neck, it does a really nice job of building that foam chamber. And this is where you're going to have to play with it. That's why they provide us with a gate valve. Make small adjustments until you get the best foam chamber <clears throat> or foam reaction possible in the chamber. One other little thing that could mess with you is your line that leads down to your collection cup. If this elbow or this line clogs, it will actually produce back pressure inside your protein skimmer so it doesn't run as well. In fact, if it happens, I've actually had this happen before, you'll get too much buildup in here and it'll actually spill up the top. That's not what you want. This is, not only does this let water and skim mate run down to your collection cup, it's also your air vent out of the skimmer, right? This, so air is going in here, builds your bubble chamber up the sides, and then it's venting through here. So if you don't have good air ventilation going through here, your skimmer will not work as well as it could. So there we go. That's how I tune an Aqua C EV protein skimmer. And they pretty much all work the same, from the smallest EV120 all the way up to the biggest thing they build. So personally, I love these skimmers. The big thing that I think you gain from running the Aqua C EV is the amount of water flow these things run. That is kind of a cash 22 because you're gonna use a lot of electricity running that water flow and you're gonna create a little extra heat running that water flow. But by running all of that water flow, your skimmer runs more effectively because instead of processing a couple hundred gallons an hour like I would be on a smaller pinwheel style protein skimmer, I'm processing 1200 gallons an hour roughly with the system I have and ran at the way it's supposed to, this thing can process 1,700 gallons of water an hour, which means the skim mate is 
process really quickly. So I personally love these skimmers. Someday I'd really like to try the others just to get my feet wet, see what they're like, and do a real comparison. But I think it's kind of the difference between dry, having an iPhone and an Android. People who have used iPhones forever love them even though they haven't tried the competition. So I realize everything I do don't doesn't completely meet with the way Aqua C tells you to do it. You'll find lots of different stuff online on how to do it. This is how I've been doing it for years and have had a great success. So thank you for watching this episode of Mile High Reefers. If you like what I do, hit the like button. And if you haven't subscribed yet, I strongly recommend you do, as there are always more videos coming. Thanks again for watching.